Hi, my name is JC, and I'm here today to talk about some of the ways that premium subscribers can customize the stitch maps that they export from stitchmaps.com. But first, a quick thank you to all the subscribers at stitchmaps.com. Your funding is what keeps the site up and running, so thank you. Also a caveat, I'm going to be using Illustrator CS4 today. If you're using the Creative Cloud version of Illustrator or some other vector editing program like Inkscape, your mileage will vary. Your interface and the specific tools and menu options that you use are going to be different from mine, but my hope is that you'll see that the concepts remain pretty much the same despite any superficial differences in user interface. So the pattern I'm going to be playing around with today is Rosenborg, and when you export a stitch map, what you see is what you get. Now, by default, stitchmaps.com shows two vertical repeats of a pattern, which is a little bit much. So I'm going to switch down to just one vertical repeat. And I'm also going to turn on column guides. So what I see here is what's going to get exported. Click on this button. I'm going to export as PDF, primarily because my version of Illustrator doesn't handle SVG so well. You can use whichever uh, image format you like, all three, the PDF, SP, SVG, and EPS are all vector-based formats, but as I said, SVG doesn't work so well for me, I'm going to use PDF instead. My system is set up to automatically open a new PDF in preview, so I'm going to drag that down to open it up in Illustrator, and here we see like I said, what you see is what you get. I have one vertical repeated pattern and column guides enabled. Awesome. The first thing that I do whenever I'm customizing a stitch map image is to organize that image within Illustrator. If we look over at the layers panel, we see right now everything is in one great big group, which really isn't all that useful. So I'm going to select that group and then ungroup it. Now, normally I tend to use keyboard shortcuts a lot, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to try to remember to use the menu options instead so you can more clearly see what I'm doing. So ungroup, go back to the layers panel, we see that, yep, there's a lot of different elements within that stitch map image. What I want to do now is group logically related things together. Already at the top, we see that uh, the copyright image, sorry, copyright notice has already been grouped for us. I'm going to give that group a name. I like having the groups have names because then, again, helps with the organization. Now, as far as the terms of use at stitchmaps.com are concerned, you could delete this copyright notice. You could make it invisible. Um, I'd kind of appreciate it if you left it in place so that people knew where the stitch map image originated, but as you wish. The next thing that I want to organize are the symbols. If I select one right here, it happens to be this knit stitch up in the corner, I can easily select all the other symbols as well because they're all drawn in the same color. If I go to the select same as menu and say select all the items with the same stroke color, I get all of the stitches, which is awesome really handy, really fabulous. I'm going to group those together, give the group a name because naming is awesome. And one thing to note is that the the dots that are part of the Perl 2 together and Perl 3 together symbols did not get selected. And that's because even though they're the same color, it's a fill color, not a stroke color. They don't actually have a stroke color. So having selected one of the dots, now I'm going to go ahead and select all the other dots by selecting all the items with that fill color. That selects all the dots, group them, label them, and because they're, this group of dots is part of the symbols, I'm actually going to move the dots group inside the symbols group, as you can see there, just part of the way I like to organize things. Next up are the row numbers. They all have the same fill color. Select all of them, group them, label them, lock them. Keeps things organized. 
if I select one of these gray lines here, those are your column guides. If I select same stroke color, I get all the other column guides, group them, label the group. I'm going to lock it. I'm also going to make them invisible for the time being, just get that clutter out of my way. What's left are these polygons, these per symbol polygons, one behind every symbol. They're white on white, so you can't really see them, but they're there in case you want to give each symbol its own color. Now, I'm going to talk about that, I think, in a future instructional video. So for right now, I'm just going to select all of those polygons, group them, give the group a name, and I'm going to make that group invisible, just get it out of my hair entirely. So now that my stitch map, all the elements within that vector image are organized the way I like, this is a fabulous time to save my work before going ahead and starting to make some changes. One quick and simple change, let's say I select all the row numbers, I want to change the font for those row numbers. By default it's Deja Vu Sans, but I'd rather have it match um, the font that I typically use in my patterns. I'm going to change it to Chaparral Pro. They look a little small, so I'm going to enlarge them a little bit, change the weight from light, that is thin, to semi-bold. And I think that that looks plenty readable, but it's perhaps a little bit too prominent. Let's change the color, the fill color from, currently it's 60% grayscale, let's tone it down a little bit, 45. And that looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to go ahead and save that change as well. One thing uh, you might want to do with a stitch map, not so much with a, a lace image like this, but one that was strictly knits and pearls, you might want to highlight all the pearl symbols. Let's give that a try. Now, there's no way to automatically select all the pearls. That's kind of a bummer. But with the group selection tool, I can select the items within the symbols group that represent pearls. You can hold down the shift key, select them um, fairly quickly. It's a little tedious, not too bad. Once I have a whole slew of pearls selected, believe you me, I'm going to group them. Give the group a name. And bear with me as I repeat that process with the next column of pearls. Again, I don't know that highlighting pearls is all that important for a lace pattern such as this one, but you may disagree with me. You may want to have your pearls highlighted in some way, so let's look at a couple ways of doing that. Selected a group of them, give that group a name, and one way that I could make the pearls more prominent is to change their stroke thickness. Uh, let's give them a stroke thickness, say, of 1.2 point. I think that's about double the usual stroke thickness. Eh, that makes them a little bit more prominent, but let's try making them thicker still. 1.5 point. And that's definitely, definitely more visible now. But if we look close, we can see that they have squared off edges that I'm not really keen on. So let's change the end caps rounded. And that looks a little bit more friendly, shall we say. So that's one way to modify a set of pearl symbols to make them more prominent. I'm going to show you another way that it could be done. Going back to our column guides that we were looking at earlier, I could just simply select the column guides behind a couple of pearl columns and play with those. Specifically, because I want to leave the original lines alone, I'm just going to create some copies. So I'm going to copy those four, paste in front, that creates four new ones, precisely the same locations at the as the old. Create a group, and that group, I'm going to give the name duplicates. 
and all the others, I'm going to give them the, the group name originals. So if I hide the duplicates, we can see I still have all my original column guidelines. But if I turn on just the duplicates, I've got those four right there. So now I can play with these. Let's say that I change their stroke width, make them wider until they appear to merge even. And that would definitely highlight those pearl columns, perhaps a little bit too much. Let's try changing the color instead of 40% gray, just a really subtle 8% gray. So what do we have here are two different ways of highlighting some stitch columns, either by changing the symbols themselves or by using column guides. Um, can't say as I really like this option, so I'm going to just turn that off. But I want to show you another reason why you might want to play with column guides. Let's turn the original column guides back on long enough to select these three. Again, I'm going to do copy, paste in front, group them, and that group going to move outside the original group, give it the name dotted. Hide the originals, but the dotted lines I'm going to move just slightly using the arrow key, move them slightly to the side. And now you can see that they outline two different horizontal repeats of the pattern. To actually make the dotted lines dotted, I go to the stroke panel, select dashed line, and also specify the size that I want for those dots. And that looks pretty good, a little bit too subtle maybe. Changing that stroke color, making it a little bit darker. And there you have it. We have thus far manipulated the stitch map, giving it some groups with names that helps with the organization, makes it easier to then manipulate things. We've played around changing the row numbers, changing the font and the color that they were displayed in. We've also played around with a couple of different ways to indicate pearls. I happen to prefer just simply making those pearl symbols a little bit darker. And we've played around with using column guides in order to create some repeat lines. So there's a variety of things you can do in order to manipulate a stitch map image that's been exported. I think that's enough for today. I'm going to save this image. The PDF I could import directly into an InDesign document if I were, again, writing a pattern using this stitch map. Your text editing program might accept PDFs as well, or you might need to export from Illustrator in some other format, SVG or maybe PNG, something to that effect. Um, in a future video, like I said before, we'll talk about coloring a stitch map by making use of those per stitch polygons. But again, I think this is enough for now. Um, until next time, I'm going to encourage you to join the Stitch Maps group on Ravelry so that we can chat there. And until then, enjoy working with Stitch Maps. Bye bye.